There's been a presence in the house. I have a lot of work to do. I made a video on my computer yesterday with my notes. I've decided to try to keep Laura with me. For years, I've researched the possibility that consciousness or mind is not the same thing as the physical brain. Since Laura's funeral, I swear, I have felt her presence. I've decided to spend several hours a day in the isolation tank visualizing Laura. I don't know what will be the outcome, except probably to indulge my own grief. But if any of her energy remains, then by giving it attention and focus, maybe I can lengthen its influence. Since work no longer interests me, I've decided to make this my work. I will log the results. I've been spending two hours a day in the tank. The results have varied. Sometimes I'm convinced I feel Laura's presence. Other times I'm not able to get past my doubts. I still believe Laura is here. I do. Bergson, the philosopher, believed we choose our own reality. If nothing else, I have done that. I'm having new equipment designed that should boost my sessions in the tank. That is all. Laura would be 33 today. Happy birthday, Laura. Happy birthday, darling. Something strange has been happening. There have been several incidents that indicate a presence in the house. The presence of Laura. It sounds insane, I know, but there have been undeniable physical phenomena. Is it possible that through my sessions in the tank, I've given Laura the energy to manifest? I plan to keep a careful record of events as they unfold. And there might be something in the field of psi research that could help. I'll look into it. Laura's presence in the house has continued. I've decided to begin a new experiment to study the effects of imagination. I'll use students as subjects and my fMRI. My hope is to record data on the areas of the brain involved in detailed visualizations. Perhaps using biofeedback, I can train myself to stimulate the same area in my own brain and thus increase the power of my sessions in the tank. This may, in turn, give more energy to Laura. should take another look at the instructions in Ramuskin's book before I put this thing together. Good. Now I can get started.
No. I've got something set wrong on the motor. I need to take another look at the diagram in Ramaskin's book. It seems to be correct. There, that's got it. The dialogue generator is set correctly. I'm hoping Laura will be able to use it to communicate. It's working. Come on, Laura, talk to me. I'm not sure what Laura's trying to say, if that is indeed Laura. I am. I'm? Maybe I'm trying to come through? I'm not sure what Laura's trying to say. She's not here now, but I'm sure Mrs. Dalton saw Laura. She hated me for taking this one, but I couldn't help it. She looked so radiant with joy. Laura and me, she looks wonderful in this one. That was taken on our honeymoon. We spent it in the Loire Valley in France. That's the Gite Rural we lived in, near saint benoit le forêt Laura and me at the Assam Reserve, India. Laura at our lake cottage. I wanted to rebuild the memory of a night we went swimming there. I'll take this for a visual cue.
I can't look at that dress without remembering how Laura looked in it. She was radiant in white. That was one of Laura's favorite dresses, but it's not right for the memory I'm focusing on. These are my clothes. Nothing to remember from that. I remember this sweater. She looked great in it. But she never wore it at the cottage. She wasn't wearing that on the night I have in mind. She wore it while on holiday, yes, but not at the cottage. This is Laura's bathrobe. She wasn't wearing it that night at the cottage, but her swimsuit should be around here somewhere. I think I remember what we were playing that night. Now I just have to locate it. Various CD albums. Nothing that I would have listened to that night. The Vivaldi collection. No, I don't think it was Vivaldi. The Scarlet Furies. Yes, that's the one we were listening to at the lake. The Scarlet Furies. That's one we were listening to at the lake. You still haven't told me what we're doing for my birthday tomorrow. I hope you haven't planned anything epic or embarrassing. It's your birthday tomorrow? Slipped my mind. Mm-hmm. As if you'd miss any opportunity to be devious.
Laura always preferred dry reds in the evening, but that's all I can say for certain. That's far too many bottles. I'll have to narrow it down further. There are still too many bottles. Terrific. That narrows it down to three bottles. I can easily taste that many. This is it. The CD tray has opened. The CD is loaded. First, I need to set up the tank session. Those are basic scents that I can infuse in the machine. Pine, vanilla and sandalwood. But I need something more specific, so I should use the funnel. The shampoo is loaded in the scent filter. Everything's set. I'm ready. You still haven't told me what we're doing for my birthday tomorrow. I hope you haven't planned anything epic or embarrassing. It's your birthday tomorrow? Slip my mind. Mm-hmm. As if you'd miss any opportunity to be devious. Speaking of which, Dad says he'll be joining us for a few days in Venice at Christmas. Won't that be marvelous? I'm glad you talked me into it. It should be so lovely with all the decorations and the ceremonies in the cathedrals. Blue tiles. Blue tiles. Check the cars, David. Check the cars, David. Check the cars, David.
blue tiles. And yes, there is something odd about this photo. I need to examine this more closely. Oh my god, what is that thing? David, can I get you something? No, I'm fine. It's a business card from Inspector Pazer of the Oxford Police Department. He was the investigator on the accident. Inspector, it's David Stiles. You worked on my case, car crash in Oxford. Oh, Dr. Stiles. I remember. Your wife. Terrible accident. Yes. Look, I know it was a long time ago, and this is a strange question. Was there anything unusual about the cars? The car that hit us, perhaps, or just anything you remember? Hang on a sec. I'm looking at the file. Listen, what made you call and ask me about it now? I thought I remembered hearing something. It's been bothering me. I don't remember ever telling you. You were in the hospital and... Well, anyway, there was something a bit off. The car that hit you, the gas pedal was fused to the floor. Actually melted into it. Thing is, that car didn't burn in the crash. Not a bit of it. It might explain him running through that give way sign. Except how the driver got from his home five miles away to that junction with a gas pedal in that condition is a mystery to me, Dr. Stiles. Thank you. You're right. Very curious. If there's anything else I can... I'll be in touch. Do you have something to say to me, Miss Everett? No. Turn that thing off, please. Dr. Stiles, are you sure it's safe after what happened last night? Safe? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? He doesn't even know. Why should Dr. Stiles concern himself with fraternity pranks? I still feel as nervous as a virgin on prom night. Settle down. I'm not paying you to chitter-chatter. Lie back and close your eyes.
relax. Sink into the bed. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Tonight, you're at the swimming pool at St. Edmund. Your eyes are closed and you're standing on the rough cement surface next to the pool. You grip and relax your bare feet. Your toes can feel all the tiny bumps and smooth paint of the cement. You smell the chlorine in the air and feel dampness on your skin. When you open your eyes, you will see a pleasant illumination from the lamps reflecting off the water. <gasps> Get out! Get out! Sam! Sam! Something's happened. Get up, come on. What? What are you doing in my room? A few seconds earlier and you'd have caught me dressing. Sorry, I'll uh, wait in the hall.